This is KRLD AM and FM in Dallas, complete big time radio. KRLD Radio 1080 has more listeners than any other single radio station in Texas. KRLD and its staff are dedicated to three principles service, entertainment, and information for its vast audience. Only the highest standards in all three fields are maintained. Complete big time radio. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Go get the horse's saddle, Chester. I'll meet you at the stable in a few minutes, huh? Maybe I ought to stay with you while you tell her. I might be of some help if she starts throwing things. Don't worry about Kitty. She'll understand, all right. I wouldn't count on her, Mr. Dillon. She's been looking forward to this sociable for weeks. Uh, some things can't be helped, Chester. The law comes before town socials. Kitty knows that as well as I do. Yes, sir. Well, good luck. Uh, if I'm not there by the time you're ready, you bring the horses back here to the Long Branch, huh? Yes, sir, I will. All right. Hello, Sam. Yeah, Marshal. Where's Miss Kitty? She back in the office. Oh, thanks. Come in. Hello, Kitty. Oh, Matt. You're early. <laughs> yeah, I, uh... I came by to tell you that uh, I won't be able to go with you after all. Oh? Uh, yeah, you see, I just got a telegram from the sheriff in Springville. I got to go over there and pick up a prisoner and bring him back here for trial. And you're leaving right now? Uh, well, yeah, Chester's getting our horses. Well, couldn't it wait for three hours? Well, it's a two-day ride up there, Kitty. Judge Blint will be in Dodge for the trial on Friday, and I'd be cutting it pretty close as it is. You understand that, don't you? Oh, of course. Doesn't matter. There'll be another social next year. Yeah. Besides, I'm not too sure I like this new dress I bought anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's very pretty. I'm glad you like it. Uh, uh, Kitty, I know you've been looking forward to this. Just because I can't take you is no reason that you, you shouldn't go. You know, there are plenty of fellows who'd be more than happy to take you. Oh, you're right, Matt. Shouldn't be any trouble at all to find two or three escorts in the next half hour. Well, sure. Uh, I'm sorry, Kitty. I, I'll see you when I get back, huh? So long. So long, Matt. Hope you have a real nice trip. Well, if I'd have been in town yesterday, Kitty, I would have taken you to the social. <laughs> That's sweet of you, Doc, but uh, I don't think I'd have gone anyway. Matt sort of took the wind out of me. Nah, but Kitty never depend on a marshal. Or a doctor, either, <laughs> when it comes to social affairs. I suppose I should have resigned myself to that by this time, but it, it hurts all the same. Sometimes I think I'd be better off if I got out of this town. Maybe you went to San Francisco. San Francisco? Oh, no, no, Kitty. No, you'll feel different when Matt gets back. Everything will be the same again. Oh, yeah, that's one thing I can count on. Everything will always be the same. The Arkansas is just over there, Kitty. Maybe we'd better water the horse and head back to Dodge. You getting hungry, Doc? Oh, I won't have any trouble eating a good-sized breakfast. But, oh, but more important, I have to be back at the office. Mrs. Ketchum is bringing her kids in this morning. All oh, six of them? All six of them. I was going to give them their smallpox vaccinations. Uh, Doc, hey, look. Uh, 
Uh, is that a man lying over there? Uh, it is. It's, there's something wrong. He, he must be hurt. Here, I'll, I'll give you a hand, yeah. Kitty. What's the matter, mister? I mean, oh, the, this man needs help, Kitty. He's lost a lot of blood. What's wrong with him? He's been shot. He, he needs help, bad. Well, what can you do for him uh, way out here? Well, the best thing would be to get him into Dodge. But I don't think he'd make it. Um, uh, Rudd Stewart's place isn't far from here. Yes, you're right, Kitty. We'd better try to get him there. You've been a big help, Rudd. I appreciate you letting us bring this man in here. Yeah, and that's the least I could do, Doc, considering what you've done. That's one thing I don't think I could ever do, take a bullet out of a man. Well, I'm just thankful we got it out in time. You think he'll live, huh? We should. It's up to him now. Wonder who he is. Doc. Huh? I think he's coming out of it. Oh, well, don't... Oh, no, just lie easy, mister. What? Huh? Who are you? I'm Doc Adams from Dodge. How'd I get here? Well, we found you out in the prairie and brought you here. Oh. Uh, where's my horse? I put him out in the barn, young fella. Uh, my, my saddlebags. Where's my saddlebags? No, no, no. Lie back there. Uh, you can't be staring around. You, you'll have to take I, it easy for a while. i got a saddlebag. Well, where is it, Red? In the barn. Hey, mister, will you please bring it to me? All right, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get it. Please, yes, What's your name, mister? Murdoch. Dean Murdoch. How'd you get that bullet in here? Well, yeah, how long do I have to be in this bed? Well, that all depends on how well you take care of yourself. It's, it's up to you. You gonna tell us about the bullet, mister? Yeah. Someone tried to rob me. Last night when I, I was heading for Dodge. Where's my gun? No, no, no. It's right over there on the chair. You must be carrying something mighty important in that saddlebag. My, my money, my, my pay money. I just left a trail herd of Abilene. When's that old man now coming wait back? just a minute. Uh, stop worrying. you you got to get some rest, you understand? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kitty. Yeah. You believe him, Doc? Well, I don't know why not. He seems like a nice enough fellow. Yeah. You really think he'll be all right? It'll take a few days, though. I should get him into the office, but he can't be moved until tomorrow, at least. But he'll have to have proper care today. Uh, Doc. Yeah? yeah? I'm a pretty good nurse when I have to be. Oh, no, no. This isn't your responsibility. Well, it's just as much mine as it is yours. You can't stay. Mrs. Ketchum's bringing her kids in. Remember? Oh, no, no. I, I, I'm not leaving you here. Uh, Rudd can take care of me. But you can't depend on Rudd. He's too feeble. I'll, I'll stay here today. Oh, well, I, I don't know. I, I suppose it'll be all right if I, but I'll come back this evening and see how he's doing, and then I'll take you back to Doc. All right, Doc, and don't you worry about a thing. <laughs> When's the last time you used your flash camera? Back around the holidays? Well, before another big event comes up in your house, why not take the camera down from the shelf and try it out? This is one good way to make sure your camera's batteries are still working. If they're not working or they're weak, then hurry. Take advantage of your Sylvania dealer's great offer now. He'll give you free a Bright Star Pen Light Photo Flash battery with each pack of Sylvania Blue Dot flash bulbs you buy. That's a 20 cent value free. While you're at your dealer's, why not stock up on several packs of Blue Dots along with several free batteries? That way you'll always have both on hand, ready and waiting for any picture-taking occasion. But don't delay. This offer is good for a limited time only. So, anywhere Sylvania photo supplies are sold at your drugstore, supermarket, photo supply store, anywhere, ask for Sylvania Blue Dot flash bulbs, 
the world's largest selling brand. And you'll receive a Bright Star Photo Flash battery with each and every pack you buy. Get several packs today. You feel like some more soup, Dean? Yeah, I guess. Uh, here. I'll hold a spoon for you. Ah, oh, there. That ain't bad. Well, this will bring you back your strength quicker than anything else. Oh, I feel better already. You know, that sleep you had brought the color back to your face. <laughs> Hey, now, just why would a big-time saloon owner spend her whole day nursing a saddle bum like me? Oh, I haven't taken the time to figure out the reason why. Eh? Well, I'd say I'm pretty lucky. <laughs> Where are you from, Dean? Down Texas. Used to be with the Rangers down there. Why'd you leave? Oh, didn't want to be a lawman the rest of my life. Too many regulations, too much responsibility. So I hear... <laughs> So I resigned and joined a trail herd going north and left them in Abilene, and, and here I am. You said you were headed for Dodge. You going to settle there? No. No, just going through on my way to California. California? Yeah. You ever been there? Yeah, once. Long time ago. Hey, Kitty, you, you got ties in Dodge? Well, there's the Long Branch. Yeah. What else? Or is it who else? Oh, you're getting nosy. No, just, uh, just call it interested. And I don't meet many people I'm interested in. Here, eat your soup. Thanks. No, I, I ought to be well enough to go on another week. Now, that ought to give you enough time to sell that Long Branch and then... You can come along to California with me. How about that? Don't tempt me. No, with your money and my money, you can buy us a whole stack of long branches in San Francisco. Where'd you get all your money anyway? Oh, I had a good bit saved up before I joined that trail herd. And then with my pay money from it, that'd give me a nice stake. If you were really smart, you'd put that money in a bank instead of no. carrying it around in your saddle Ain't heard of a bank. bank yet was safe. I want that money where I can see it. Oh. Oh, Miss Kitty, there's a man riding up our front. Who is it? I don't know. What's he look like? Don't look like anybody I know from Dodge. He, he riding a pinta? Yeah, as a matter of fact, he is. Do you know him, Dean? Yeah, that's the man that shot me last night. Huh? I gotta get out of here. Now, you wait a minute. You're in no shape this to go anywhere. This could trouble for you and Rudd, Kitty. He knows I have his money. Dean, please lie down and listen to me. No. Now, Rudd can go out and tell him there's no one here. He'll believe Rudd. There won't be any trouble. That's right. I, I can tell him. I'll go out and meet him. Hurry. Yes, ma'am. But, Kitty, you don't know this. Go ahead. Howdy. Hello. Is this your place? That's right. What do you want? Looking for a friend of mine. You ain't here. He left a pretty good trail. Leads to this place. There ain't nobody here besides me. When's the last time you looked in your barn? There ain't nobody down there either. Well, you wouldn't mind if I seen for myself, would you? Ain't no use. You can take my word for it. I was just down there a bit ago. Yeah, what? Who was in that house? Uh, there's nobody. Well, I just saw some move in there. You're lying, old man. No, 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 Ace. No, no, no. Uh, that, that's my wife you saw. Well, you said there was nobody else here. Uh, and I meant uh, besides her. Well, you turn around. Uh, uh, no. You turn around and lead the way. No, get that gun out of my bag. You do as I say, old man, or I'll kill you. All right. All right. You see? Ain't nobody here. Where's that door lead to? Just the bedroom. All right, Dean. If you're in there, come out. Don't try anything or I'll kill the old man. All right. We're coming in. Move. Ah, open it. Don't do it, Rod. Ah. Drop the gun, mister. Get your hands up. Now, look. Drop the gun, I said. All right. Pick it up, Rod. Now, you get out of here, mister, or I'll kill you. He's in there, ain't he? You're hiding. Go on! Get out! I don't think you got the nerve to shoot don't me. Don't try me, mister. Get out of the way, Kitty! Uh, Dean! You 
killed him. Ian, he didn't have to do that. He was going to leave. You don't know what he'd have done, Kitty. Well, uh, for a man flat on the back, you sure got well in a hurry. I owed him them bullets. Or at least now my money's safe. We're going to have a clear trail to California now, Kitty, oh, you and me. You're losing your mind. Come on, Rod. Let's get him back to bed. Do you see speed laws and other regulations as restrictive? Well, that could be more infantile than believing one can prove his superiority by ignoring a stoplight. Unfortunately, too many drivers on the road subscribe to that kind of emotional outlook. The result is tragic. Almost 85% of all traffic accidents in America are caused by careless, childish driving. We hope sincerely that your attitudes are adult. We hope you know our traffic laws and the people who enforce them are there to help save your life. When'd you get back? A few minutes ago. Oh, we had a little excitement while you were gone. Yeah, so I hear Moss Grimmick was telling us something about it down at the stable. Thought I better come over here and get the full story. Well, Kitty should be the one to tell you. She was right in the middle of it. And Moss said I'd find her up here. No, no, no. She's not here right now, but she usually is. You see, that Dean Murdoch fella is in the next room then. Kitty's been watching over him like a schoolgirl with a lame kitten. She has? Yeah. Well, how's this Murdoch doing? Oh, fine, fine. So all I can do is keep him in bed. Ordinarily, a man as bad off as he was when we found him would be laid up for a couple of weeks, but <laughs> not him. And this is only the fourth day. What'd you do with the man he killed out there? Well, we buried him at Rudd's place. I got out there not long after it happened, and poor old Rudd, he was struggling to dig a grave, so, so I helped him. I knew that you'd want to know all about him, so I wrote down a full description. Now, let me see it. Yeah, it's on the desk, along with my coroner's report. Yeah. Huh? What'd you bring Murdoch in the Dodge, Doc? Well, not until the next morning. I didn't want to move him that day, and it's a good thing I didn't, too. He, he started to run a bad fever, so Kitty and I spent the night at Rudd's place. And you should have seen her, Matt. She, she was up most of the night, keeping wet cloths on his forehead, and if you ever need a good nurse, you know where to get one. Doc, this description fits the man I was supposed to pick up in Springville. What? Yeah, his name is Blade Grant. By the time I got there, he'd broken jail. Well, I'll... You mind if I go in and talk to Murdoch? No, no, come on. Dean, this is Marshal Dillon. He wants to talk to you. Oh, hello. Dean, didn't know this town was big enough to have a marshal. Oh, now, don't tell me Kitty hasn't told you about Marshal Dillon. No, she didn't. Well, huh, well, well, I'll be in the other room if you need me. Thanks, sir. Dean, how well did you know Blade Grant? Who? Blade Grant, the man you killed at Rudd's place. Oh, was that his name? I'm pretty sure of it. What did you know about him? Nothing. Well, Blade Grant and his partner robbed the bank in Springville. The sheriff stopped Grant and jailed him, but the partner got away with the money. Now, five days ago, the partner came back, killed the sheriff, and let Grant out of jail. Uh, Marshal, I don't know nothing about it. I just it. got in from Springville. I was supposed to bring Grant back here for trial. Well, all I know is, Marshal, he's a man who tried to rob me, if it's the same one. Yeah. They tell me you keep your money in that saddlebag, huh? That's right. If you don't mind, I think I'll take a look. Hey, Miss Kitty! Oh, Chester! Uh, wait a minute. Sure, Chester. Well, I, I seen you from across the street. I didn't know you were back. Yeah, we rode in just a little bit ago. Where's Matt? He went up to Doc's office. Well, I was just going there myself. Oh, well, I'll walk with you. Sure. Hey, we heard all about what happened to you out at Rudd's place. That sure was something. Well, I'll never forget it. How was your trip? <laughs> Long, dusty, and all for nothing. <laughs> Gunshots. Huh? Sound like they come from Doc's Let's office. Go. Matt. Hello, Kitty. What happened, Mr. Dillon? I had to shoot a man in there, Chester. Dean. Oh, Dean. Kitty, wait. Huh? He's dead. Oh, no. 
Matthew. Maybe you better tell Kitty what happened. Yeah. Maybe you better. Well, Kitty, Dean Murdoch had a partner, Blade Grant, the man he killed out at Rudd's. They robbed a bank up in Springville. Dean? The sheriff caught Grant, but Dean got away. And then he came back and broke Grant out of jail and killed the sheriff. I can't believe that. Well, that's true. When he took Grant to the place where he hid the money, Grant tried to take all the money and shot Dean in the process. Dean got away, and you know the rest. He told me that just before he died. But he wasn't that kind of a man. The bank money was marked, Kitty. It's in there if you want to see it. Oh. Why'd you have to kill him? Because he drew first, Kitty. When he knew I had him dead to rights. I'm sorry it happened the way it did. I understand how you felt about him. There's no reason for you to be sorry, Matt. It's your job, I guess. Part of your rotten job. If you'll excuse me, I think I'd better get back to the Long Branch. Kitty, I... Being Saturday and all. Uh, Kitty. Could I walk you back, Miss Kitty? Thank you, Chester. Oh, Doc, what do you think? Well, she took it a lot better than I thought she would. Why don't we take care of things here and then... Uh, go on down to the Long Branch. And back here, you drink, huh? Yeah. I think she'd like that. This is Dennis James to make a point about reliable, effective Kellogg's All Bran. Repeat after me, please. What do you want when you need bran? What do you want when you need bran? Reliability. Reliability. Now, what do you get in Kellogg's All Bran? What do you get in Kellogg's All Bran? Reliability. Right. There's nothing like the reliable Kellogg way to get the effectiveness you want from bran. Kellogg's All Bran is the real Battle Creek formula with more of the vital bran bulk to help you keep regular. Low in calories and mighty appetizing. That's Kellogg's All Bran. And take advantage of the special rose bush offer now on the package. Famous queen of the garden rose bushes, six formally patented varieties, every one a beauty, at just a fraction of their usual cost. Yours for only 50 cents a bush when you include a box top from reliable, effective Kellogg's All Bran. Gunsmoke, produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Frank Ferris, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, John Daner, and Ralph Moody. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. This is the CBS Radio Network. Louis de Rochemont's Windjammer, a modern adventure on the high seas, now showing at the Winwood Theater in Cinemerico. The three-projector process that casts its image on a gigantic curved wall-to-wall screen. See the exclusive engagement, Windjammer, at the Winwood Theater... Zangs at Illinois in Oak Cliff. Call Whitehall 29529 for reservations. You're in tune with KRLD, AM and FM Dallas, complete big time radio. Each Monday night at 810, when KRLD salutes one of the high schools in this area, you'll be entertained with music by the high school bands. You'll also enjoy songs by the various choral groups. Listen Monday night at 810, when KRLD will salute... Grand Prairie High School. Stay tuned now for the news of the world tonight. Followed at 7.15 by Howard K. Smith. KRLD time now 7 o'clock. The downtown temperature 46 degrees.